Hello, everybody. Welcome to the weekly colloquium series of the C3.AI Digital Transformation Institute. The Spring 22 series is focused on incentive design and learning for societal systems. Uh, in, after today's uh, seminar or colloquium, we have uh, uh, several outstanding ones continuing in the next few weeks. Uh, Melin Tambe from Harvard, Ruda Mehta from University of Illinois, and Nikhil Gerg from uh, Cornell, and Chinmay Maheswari from University of California, Berkeley. Uh, we've also had a number of great talks earlier this semester. Instead of going through the list, I'll let you uh, uh, look for them on our YouTube channel. Uh, all the information about our uh, uh, colloquium series can be found uh, at our website, c3dti.ai. So we're delighted to have Dr. Mang Chi Wu, who will soon be Professor Mang Chi Wu, uh, 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 who will talk about on convergence and stability of coupled belief, strategy, learning, dynamics, and continuous games. Mang Chi is a research fellow at the University of California at Berkeley. Uh, working on learning and games in the Simonson, Simons Institute program and in the department of EECS. Uh, soon she'll start as an uh, assistant professor in Cornell School of Operations Research and Information Engineering. Uh, she works on game theory, machine learning, engineering systems, and economic incentives. Her research analyzes strategic interactions between technologies and human users under physical constraints and uncertainties of so so socio-technical systems. She also designs information and incentive mechanisms to improve system efficiency. Uh, she got her PhD in social engineering systems at MIT. She also holds an MS in transportation at MIT and a BS in applied mathematics from Peking University. Uh, she's a recipient of a number of awards, including the Hammer Fellowship, UTC Milton Pikarski Memorial Award, the Siebel Scholarship, EECS Rising Star, and Simons Fellowship. Manchi, the virtual floor is yours. Okay, thanks, Sri Khan, for the kind introduction. Um, I will share my screen. Okay, is that good? Yes, it looks good. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, turn it into full screen. Okay, uh, thanks, everyone. Uh, I'm very glad to be the speaker of this week. I'm going to talk about on convergence and stability of learning dynamics in continuous GANs. And uh, so this is the outline of my talk. Um, I will spend most of the time, uh, the majority of the time uh, in the next one hour to talk about uh, this work um, that I did in, as a PhD student at MIT. And it was joined with um, Professor Sarab Amin and Professor Asuma Ostagler. And uh, towards the end of the talk, I will also talk about a line of new work that I started to work on with uh, Ching Mei, uh, Shitich, and Professor Shankar Sastry at UC Berkeley. I'm very excited about this new line of work on adaptive incentive design uh, with learning agents in engineering systems. But we will see um, how much time I get to get this part. Uh, all these papers are gonna be available online. Um, okay, so without any delay, let's get on to the first part. Um, so in this, in this work, we want to uh, provide some answer and solution to a very basic question. Uh, that is how strategic players uh, repeatedly interact uh, uh, with themselves in some uncertain environment. So this could come from uh, with some imperfect information of their payoffs or some uh, uh, uncertainty in the environment or the social scale systems, while they can rely on an information platform to learn and adjust their strategies. So in lots of uh, social scale systems, uh, information platforms, thanks to the digital transformation, is able to collect the data from the system and provide imperfect information, such as like parameter estimate, to their receivers, to the users uh, that can influence their decisions when they interact with each other. But I want to emphasize that the loop here is really closed uh, because the platform will need to rely on the data they collect uh, to give this estimate. And this data can be generated in the system 
uh, from this strategic interaction. So this actually creates the dynamic interplay between the parameter estimate and also strategic interactions in games. And this is what I want to focus on today. I want to give you some motivation of um, what is a real world scenario could be for this uh, for such situation. Um, in urban networks, when there is a major disruption, such as, uh, for example, this tragic bridge collapse that happened in 2007, um, it creates a prolonged disruption of this network. And empirical evidence has shown that indeed, travelers go through and experience uh, a pretty long period of time of adjusting and learning to a new equilibrium before they can settle down with a new uh, pattern of uh, uh, route choices. So on the right-hand side in this picture, it is actually from this paper, Drew Levinson and Bill in 2010. In this paper, they analyzed the level of fluctuation of traffic pattern, comparing the 2007 one after the collapse with the uh, data collected one year ago. So the higher this value is, uh, it represents that the more, the larger proportion of travelers are changing and adjusting this, their travel behavior in that month. And we can see that, for example, on holiday, this value is high because people deviating from their normal pattern. And this number is also pretty high uh, at the bridge collapse day. And after it, it took several weeks or even almost two months uh, for it to fully go back to the previous year level. So this means during this time, uh, the network is in the process of re-equilibrating. But how this process happens is much less understood. So in this problem, uh, we can consider there is public information platform, for example, the Google Map, Apple Map, or Waze, that is providing the uh, that is repeatedly updating the travel time estimates and providing the estimates to travelers in making their routing decisions. But the information platform collects this day-to-day. Uh, traveling outcome, for example, the flow of edges in the network, as well as the uh, driving time cost of edges. So this, these are the data that is generated from the routing decision and is used by the platform uh, to update their um, prediction. Um, if you wanna consider a problem outside of urban networks, then here's an example of um, such learning dynamics happening in e-commerce market. Uh, for example, when there is a new product that enters the market, it is unknown how uh, the, the, the demand function or the price function looks like for this product. And the e-commerce platform uh, is the information aggregator that collects this data of uh, purchase um, price, as well as the uh, num frequency of purchase uh, to provide this demand, updated demand estimation to the producers. And producers, these uh, sellers will adjust their production or selling strategy based on the repeatedly updated uh, information about the market. So here's the model. Uh, we, we propose a stochastic learning dynamics with discrete time steps, um, K, and there is a finite number of players. Um, we assume that the uh, environment is parameterized uh, based on an unknown parameter S, and for simplicity, we assume the set of parameter is finite, that is the capital S. In each step, uh, uh, the players will choose a strategy profile uh, from the physical set. Uh, we consider to be a continuous game. So this set Q is a convex, uh, compact, and continuous uh, strategy set space. I will later on talk about how this extends to finite games. But in fact, the challenges arises more significantly in continuous game. So for the most chunk of the result, we will uh, think that this Q set is a continuous set. Um, player's utility depends on the unknown parameter. And when the parameter is S, the payoff vector is distributed according to this, uh, this PDF. And we can write the payoff 
as two part without loss of generality. So that's the average payoff function, UIS, that depends on both the parameter as well as the strategy profile as um, plus the noise term. So the noise term can also depend on S and also the strategy profile. The true parameter um, as a star is unknown, but we know that it is in the finite set of capital S. Okay, so the information platform maintains a belief estimate of the unknown parameter. Um, the initial belief theta one has full support on the uh, finite set of parameter space. And in each step, this platform will collect data of the uh, game outcome. So this data includes the strategy profile as well as the payoff outcome um, of uh, players' strategies as well as their payoffs and use this to update the belief according to the base rule. So this is the base rule. And, and then the platform is public and, and will repeatedly update this information and broadcast it to all the uh, players in the game for them to make decisions in the next stage. Um, so I want to give a brief remark here that although we assume that the entire strategy profile and payoff outcome can be observed by the platform, in many cases, uh, they only need to observe as sufficient statistics of this profile. So for example, in a traffic network, uh, they only need to observe the edge load as well as the uh, travel time for, these, for each edge in the network, instead of observing the routing decision of individual travelers. And in this example, they only need to observe, for example, um, the total production level, as well as the transaction price distribution to learn this uh, inverse demand function instead of observing uh, each transaction detail. So here is the strategy update. When, when agents receive this updated belief, they are going to update their strategy. And here, based on this belief, they are able to compute an expected utility function that is the weighted summation of the parameterized utility function according to the updated belief. And then the strategy update is a map from the updated belief as well as the strategy that is played in the past. So here we notice that I didn't specify a particular strategy update, but instead I wrote it in a generic format. Uh, later on, I will talk, I will tell you what assumptions I made on this strategy update. But before that, let, let me give you a, four, uh, a few examples of strategy updates to um, make things a bit more concrete. So, um, based on the updated belief, as well as the observed opponent's strategy in last round, uh, agent I will be able to update her strategy according to best response. So this could be a simultaneous best response, sequential best response, or inertial uh, best response, which is to take a linear combination of the last round strategy and also the best response. And this alpha K controls the step size and also the learning rate. So these these three are uh, basically descendant of this general best response dynamics that is easy to understand. Also, we can, we can also plug in some other uh, learning dynamics such as no regret learning. Um, a classical no regret learning algorithm will assume that they uh, rely on the gradient. Uh, usually it typically assumes that they have an oracle that can output the gradient uh, that is unbiased estimator. But here it is different because we have a parameterized utility function and the gradient computed is actually based on the parameterized utility function uh, together with the updated belief. So the updated belief will affect the um, estimated gradient ascent algorithm of the score because this score does not account for the uh, constraints on the strategy space we have this regularized function to find the feasible strategy uh, from the score. But if you choose a particular format of this regularizer, uh, this Q can be simplified. So one, one version of this uh, mirror ascent algorithm is in fact uh, simply the projected gradient ascent algorithm. Um, that is a classical algorithm for multi-agent no regret learning in continuous games. So essentially, 
we don't uh, specify a particular strategy update, but you can choose the one that you like. And there has been uh, extensive study on each one of them uh, in standard games. In the sense that if you fix the theta k plus one, if you don't consider the belief update, but simply fix this belief to be a static belief theta, then these strategy updates will be turned into the corresponding classical strategy learning in games uh, with a static information environment theta. The challenge and the difference here is the interplay between the belief updates as well as the strategy update in a way that the belief is affecting uh, the function of the strategy update. And the strategy update is in this non-stationary uh, information environment. Okay, so this is the key feature that I have emphasized, the dynamic interplay between parameter learning on the platform side, as well as learning in games with imperfect information on the player side. Also, I want to emphasize that the data used for estimating the parameter is not ID uh, because the platform aggregates information based on the outcomes generated by the player strategies, but players are strategic and they choose strategies based on the information provided by the uh, platform. So the game outcome is not IID distribution. Um, so this work is built on and inspired by uh, mainly three lines of Ms. great Shippen, literature. Can I ask yeah. a quick question on the model? Yes, please. Uh, I'm trying to relate it to the two examples that you gave, one being road mm. transport. Uh, but in the road transport context, isn't, isn't it typically people look at what drop equilibrium or something where the number of players is uh, uh, infinity. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so how would you relate your model here? You have a sort of a fixed number of players and then you're learning something uh, because you did mention that uh, here you, you can have sufficient statistics which are just edge information rather than about individuals. Mm -hmm. But the number of individuals, I mean, so I was trying to understand how to relate this to uh, the, the road transport example to what your model here. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. Um, so actually, in one of the conference papers that we uh, write based on the application of this work is uh, considering continuous um, continuous player player space. So in that case, we have this population of players and the water of equilibrium. And the strategy is basically how the uh, how the total demand is split across different routes. Um, so in that case, it is the sufficient statistics is the uh, is the volume of the flow and the realized driving time of each edge. But this can also be put in an atomic routing uh, uh, setting uh, where you have the integer number of travelers on, on each edge and you also have the realized uh, uh, cost of the edge. So, so the, the way I choose to present this problem is that I try to have this game setup, uh, which is used to explain the main results. But actually, you can do uh, quite a few variations, such as turning the player set into continuum um, population, uh, turning the strategy space into finite number of uh, action profiles, and also to consider mixed strategy. Thank you. Uh, OK, yeah, I hope this answers your question. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for the question. Um, OK. OK, so yeah, so it is based on three lines of literature. The first line is on statistical learning, uh, especially the, the Bayesian learning setting um, for estimating the belief and the unknown parameter. And the second is this very rich field of strategy learning in games, and this is by no means exhaustive. Uh, there, there are so many great papers in this direction and, and more and more every year. Um, but I try to categorize uh, for, this, for this rich field to three sub, um, sub line. So basically it's the best response and fictitious play, uh, no regret or gradient learning. Here I summarized um, pap papers on both no regret learning for continuous um, game space, as well as no regret learning for a normal form game, so discrete number of action space. 
And the third line is um, the distributed learning in games that also involves um, lots of nice work for evolutionary dynamics and learning in games from a dynamical system perspective. So we build on this line of literature, although we don't study a particular convergence property of these strategies, uh, but instead we build on this literature and to study the dynamic interplay between the parameter learning as well as strategy learning. And the third line is also very important is the belief based on learning in extensive form games. Uh, this link will become more clear as I talk about the property of the fixed point, because in fact, our fixed point has quite some similarity with respect to self-confirming equilibrium concept. That is the focus of um, the line of work started by Fullenberg and Levin. Okay. So uh, I have mentioned this dynamic interplay and our main contribution is to build um, a new approach to study this interplay. And in particular, we use two uh, useful handles in literature. One is the Martingale property of this belief update um, on the platforms aspect. And the second is this rich literature about learning in games with a static information environment. And our results include uh, the convergence, uh, the convergence of both the parameter estimate and the strategies that arise as the long run outcome of the, this stochastic dynamics. And the second is the stability properties. So here the stability property incorporates uh, both the belief estimate as well as the strategy. Um, and we look at both the local stability as well as the global stability property. We also show that the conditions that guarantee the complete learning, so that is the platform and the players will eventually learn what is the complete information equilibrium and complete information equilibrium is the long run outcome of this learning dynamics. But there are also scenarios when there can be learning traps that this um, learning to complete information equilibrium does not happen. And we provide approach to identify such scenario and tell you whether or not exploration uh, can help you to resolve this learning trap and to find complete information equilibrium otherwise. Um, I, I need to make these following two assumptions clear. Uh, the first is that we assume the strategy update, um, this G function, this generic form, is upper hemicontinuous in both the belief and the strategy. We notice that when a game has continuous utility function, this assumption is easily satisfied by all four examples of strategy updates. Uh, includes like these three based on best response, as well as this belief based on no regret learning. <coughs> the second assumption is that we assume when a belief is fixed as a static belief of any belief theta, then this strategy update, which reduces to the classical strategy update in the game, will converge to a Nash equilibrium in that game with this static information environment theta. So we make this assumption because our focus is not to uh, study the convergence of strategy learning in this standard um, game with static information, but rather to study the interplay between belief and strategy update. And this assumption is not satisfied by arbitrary strategy update in, and in arbitrary games, but, but it is satisfied in a few uh, classes of games that are widely studied, including potential games, zero-sum games, dominant solvable games, and strict, strict concave games. Uh, we will also briefly mention what will happen when this assumption is not satisfied. So in that case, you don't really have convergence of both belief and strategies that is just impossible, but you can also observe some interesting um, results uh, from the belief side. Okay, so this is the uh, first theorem on the convergence of this uh, learning dynamics. Under the two assumptions that we made before, both the belief and strategies will converge to a fixed point with probability one. And this fixed point has two properties. The first one is that the belief will provide a consistent estimate of the payoff estimation based on the fixed point strategy. So this means that, okay, so if you think that the parameter, the, the belief of the parameter is theta bar, 
and you do this expected uh, distribution of the payoff outcome, then this estimated distribution is the same as the true distribution according to S star. And the second property is that players have no incentive to deviate at a fixed point because the Q bar, the fixed point strategy is an equilibrium strategy in the game with respect to this imperfect fixed uh, point belief. So in this case, you have an uh, a consistent estimate of payoff distribution and you're also at an equilibrium. So neither the belief nor the strategy will be further updated. So you are at the uh, fixed point of the learning dynamics and we show that a convergence to this learning dynamics is with probability one. We also show that the belief converges exponentially fast in the sense that any parameter S that has positive KL divergence with the true parameter in the payoff distribution, which means that the parameter S does not have a consistent estimate of payoff distribution, such as will be excluded from the belief to make sure that the belief is consistent. And it will be excluded from the uh, belief vector exponentially fast with the exponent being the negative value of the KL divergence. So notice here that I didn't talk about the finite time sample or the finite uh, time uh, convergence speed of the strategy. It is because we choose this generic format of the strategy update. But if you want to look at a particular strategy update, for example, the no regret learning, a belief based no regret learning uh, with some assumption on the uh, strict concavity of your utility function, you can also derive the finite uh, time complexity for your strategy updates, but that is not the focus of the work. Okay, so I will just briefly mention the, uh, the three steps behind the proof. So the first step is to show that belief converges. And in this part, we actually leverage the property that the belief ratio of in this public information environment is a martingale, so the belief will converge. And the second is that we want to show that strategy also converge. So uh, the convergence of strategy is done by constructing an auxiliary strategy sequence. This auxiliary strategy sequence is the same as the original one up until a finite step k. And after k, it is going to be updated according to this fixed static uh, belief theta bar. And we can show that because the uh, tail behavior is the same as just the classical update with the fixed belief, under assumption two of the convergence, these auxiliary strategy sequence will converge to an equilibrium associated with the fixed point belief. So it remains to show that the distance between the original strategy sequence as well as the auxiliary strategy sequence uh, goes to zero. And this is built on the assumption one, which is about the, uh, the upper hemicontinuity of your uh, strategy update map. And in fact, here we have some tricks about how we construct the auxiliary strategy. It's not that any such strategy sequence will satisfy uh, this distance going to zero, but we need to do a few steps of making sure a, particular, a particularly constructed auxiliary strategy sequence has this property. So then it remains for us to show that the belief estimate is consistent. We note that uh, the, cha the challenge of showing this is that the um, estimate is done, is being updated using data that is not IID. But built on the strategy convergence, although the strategy is still changing, it becomes closer and closer to this fixed point strategy. So then the data, distribution is also approximately can be viewed as IID eventually when K goes to infinity. So we can approximate the likelihood function of the belief estimate and show that belief will eventually be a consistent estimate. Okay, so I promise I will talk about what happens when assumption two is not satisfied. So in this case, with no surprise, learning will not converge but we still have belief convergence because belief convergence only uses the martingale property of the belief update. Asymptotic property of this strategy sequence thanks to the constructed auxiliary strategy sequence 
will be the same as a strategy updated with this static belief theta bar. So which means if the uh, strategy update rule that you pick converges, then the strategy will converge. If it cycles, then the strategy of the uh, these coupled dynamics will also cycle. So the uh, tail behavior is the same. We can also ob uh, obtain the consistency um, result is that our estimated payoff distribution will eventually be the same as the true di payoff distribution, even if our strategy update does not converge. So eventually you will, uh, when theta converges, you will be able to correctly predict what is the distribution of the outcome. Okay, so you may wonder, what is the relationship between a fixed point strategy as well as complete information Nash equilibrium? So we say a fixed point has complete information if the belief uh, identifies the true parameter and the strategy is a, an associated complete information equilibrium. So a complete information fixed point is a fixed point, but the other direction is not always true. So learning may not recover complete information because you could end up at a fixed point where the belief forms correct estimate at the fixed point strategy, but goes very wrong about the payoff for other strategy that you did not play um, asymptotically. So in this case, it is kind of similar to this self-confirming equilibrium concept where you obtain a wrong belief on a part of the environment that you are not able to get sufficient data to prove that you're wrong. So then this wrong estimate will persistent and that forbids you of um, finding the true Nash equilibrium. Okay, so what happens? So is there any way that we can guarantee that learning will go to a complete information environment with probability one? So the answer to this question is related to global stability property of fixed point. We say that a fixed point belief and the associated equilibrium set is globally stable. If regardless of what is the state that the learning starts with, the belief will eventually converge to this particular fixed point belief and the strategy will of course go to a corresponding equilibrium with probability one. So in this case, um, the which fixed point learning converges to is not sensitive to where the learning starts. And we show that the existence of globally stable fixed point is in fact equivalent to the condition that require all fixed point having complete information, uh, having complete information. So then that is also equivalent to the case that any other belief that doesn't have complete information cannot be a fixed point belief. Why it cannot be a fixed point belief? Because such belief must include a parameter that can be distinguished from the true parameter at equilibrium. So these beliefs will not satisfy the consistency uh, condition for the fixed point. So the only belief vector that can satisfy consistency uh, requirement is the complete information fixed point. In this case, uh, the true parameter can be identified at equilibrium and we are guaranteed that learning will uh, converge to the complete information Nash equilibrium. So these conditions may not be satisfied in all games. And in fact, you can find, uh, for example, in routing game, uh, if there are two routes and, and one of the route you have a wrong belief about how high the cost may be. So then you don't take that route. You don't get the information. You will never learn about that route. So this leads to a learning trap. So that's a simple example of learning trap. So in those kind of games, your fixed point set not only contain complete information fixed point, but also other type of fixed point that doesn't have complete information. So you may wonder whether the other fixed points will arise as long run outcome and how likely that could be. This motivates us to study the local stability property of fixed point. So let me try to parse these uh, three lines of mathematical terms here. So we say that a fixed point is locally stable uh, if when your initial state of belief and strategy starts very close to the targeted fixed point, then with very high probability, 
all the states in every stage will remain very close to this fixed point. So this means that if you locally perturb the fixed point, locally perturb both the belief and the strategy of the fixed point, uh, the state will not leave will not leave the lo local neighborhood, will not be very far away from the fixed point that you perturb. So it is robust to small perturbations about the belief and the strategy. So uh, we find that uh, the sufficient condition that guarantee a fixed point to be locally stable include two conditions. One is the local consistency. So we mentioned the consistency of the fixed point belief at exactly the fixed point strategy. So that is a requirement of, uh, of fixed point. But here, local consistency is stronger than this. It requires that the belief is also obtaining a consistent estimate of payoff distribution in a small neighborhood of Cuba instead of just at Cuba. So this allows that the belief to be uh, remain consistently consistent estimate, even if uh, strategy is under local perturbation, so that the belief update will not drag the belief very far away from the local neighborhood. So this guarantees the robustness of the belief side. On the other hand, we need the local invariance property of your strategy update. This means that uh, you, you need a neighborhood of the fixed point that is invariant of the local perturbation for both the strategy and the belief. So this ensures that when the belief or the strategy is locally perturbed, uh, whichever strategy update that you choose will not get the strategy suddenly jump outside of the neighborhood of the fixed point. So it guarantees the uh, stability of the strategy side. So a brief intuition of how this is proved. This is again uses the Martingale property. And in fact, just as a simple example, if we consider that a particular parameter that has zero probability at a fixed point, so this can be changed to uh, any number between zero and one, depending on your theta bar, but you can always choose the base uh, benchmark to be zero. And you want to show that your theta k will not go beyond this epsilon bar, which is the local neighborhood that you want the belief to be always be within. So then if your belief starts with a very small number close to the fixed point belief, using the Martingale upcrossing inequality, we can bound the probability that such upcrossing between the, the uh, crossing with respect to these two lines never happens. So this is a result from the Martingale upcrossing inequality. And this tells us that if no upcrossing has ever happened, then the belief must have remained in this local neighborhood. And this allow us to quantify the upper bound of uh, upcrossing happens. And by choosing the uh, initial condition carefully under the consistency and local invariance property, we are able to find the initial state such that this probability does not exceed gamma with gamma being an arbitrarily high probability. And this is how we show that both belief and strategy will remain in local neighborhood. Okay, um, so we can also show that both of these two conditions are satisfied by any complete information fixed point. So this means that complete, uh, complete information fixed point is very robust to local perturbation. Uh, if your learning starts with almost knowing the true parameter but just have some level of ambiguity, you can be reassured that learning will not uh, get things even worse because complete information fixed point is locally stable. However, other fixed points may not be guaranteed to be locally stable unless you can check that the local consistency and local invariance properties are satisfied. Okay, so let's go to this question uh, that we uh, asked at the beginning about when learning will be complete. And so basically, when you convert to a fixed point, you want to uh, you want to understand whether or not you are at a complete information fixed point. Well, if you realize that your fixed point belief identifies a a unique parameter, so which means the support set of this fixed point belief is a singleton set then we know that the true parameter is definitely 
identified. And the singleton set gives you the true parameter. And this case, your belief converges to complete information. So you know that your strategy must also be a complete information Nash equilibrium. But we have shown from that proposition that this basically requires global stability and requiring that true parameter is identifiable in equilibrium, which is not satisfied in all cases. So, okay, so you find that your belief um, actually has more than one parameter in the identified set, and you do not know which one is the true parameter. Can we say something about whether here the strategy is a complete information equilibrium or not? Turns out that in some cases, even if your belief does not have complete information, your strategy can still be guaranteed to be a complete information equilibrium. So this is guaranteed again by first the local consistency. So if your belief, if you locally perturb your strategy and you realize that your belief has a consistent estimate of the payoff distribution in a small neighborhood of this fixed point strategy, then you know that your fixed point strategy satisfies the first order condition, not just at the fixed point, but also locally. So it is a locally optimal strategy with respect to your opponent's strategy. Second condition, you need to require the payoff concavity. So your utility function uh, needs to be concave in your own strategy. So in this case, this local optimality can be extended to global optimality. And you know that just being sure about QI is a local, satisfies the first order condition locally, will tell you that QI bar is indeed a true best response to opponent's strategy with respect to uh, the true parameter. So under these two conditions, you can guarantee that although theta bar does not learn the true parameter, it doesn't need to learn the true parameter because the strategy is already a complete information Nash equilibrium. Okay, so I want to uh, link these two conditions with some of the assumptions that are typically made for uh, uh, learning algorithms, uh, strategy learning in games. So payoff concavity is uh, usually assumed in most studies of continuous games because it is a sufficient con condition that guarantee the convergence of, uh, uh, sorry, the existence of equilibrium in continuous games. Um, although equilibrium can still exist even if payoff is not concave. And second is that the local consistency is equivalent to requiring that the belief provides consistent estimate of the utility gradient. And this is an assumption that is also assumed in most of the no regret learning algorithm. So here the belief based regret learning is based on the belief, but local consistency <coughs> can guarantee you <coughs> that <the coughs> that a gradient estimate is accurate in local neighborhood of your fixed point strategy. <coughs> okay, so we know under these two conditions, your strategy will be complete information equilibrium, but what happens if these conditions are not satisfied? If you still have concave payoff functions, then local expert exploration can solve your problem. Because local exploration of the strategy, so local perturbation of your fixed point strategy will exclude any parameter that is not locally consistent. So then it will lead to a new fixed point that satisfies both of these sufficient conditions. And you can know that learning is complete in this case. <coughs> However, if you are dealing with a continuous game, where payoff function is not concave, then local exploration is not sufficient. So in fact, this becomes a, challenge, a very challenging problem because first, you first need to guarantee that equilibrium still exists in your non-concave non utility function. But second, you, need to, you really need to identify the true parameter here. But to do that, you cannot do local perturbation anymore because local exploration will not ex exclude any parameter. So they are all locally consistent. So you need to distinguish any pair of the parameter by sampling payoffs at some strategy profile outside of your local neighborhood to distinguish and identify the true parameter. Okay, so as I've mentioned, um, so this can be 
can have a few variants of the results and the proof all follows from, uh, so the convergence proof from the three steps and the stability proof make use of the martingale upcrossing inequality. And here you can have time scale separation. So results will still hold if your belief update is at a slower time scale. So for example, you um, only update your belief after a batch of, st of stages compared to the strategy updates. It also holds for finite games, um, but finite games actually like makes things a lot easier here. Uh, so the challenge of whether local perturbation can work or not uh, becomes vacuous in finite games because any local perturbation of a mixed strategy will always identify the complete information equilibrium because local perturbation basically uh, you are able to sample any uh, pure action profile with some small probability. And it also holds for other uh, parameter estimates, for example, the uh, maximum a posterior estimate, uh, maximum likelihood estimate, um, as well as if your utility function is linear, it also holds for OLS estimate. So this is because all these estimates, uh, we are able to still use the martingale property for these estimates in these different methods. So all the, um, all the methods as well as the proofs will go through. Uh, when you change a different parameter estimate. Okay, so briefly wrap up uh, this first part. We looked at this uh, problem that addresses the dynamic interplay between parameter learning and strategy learning in games. We looked at the convergence of the joint evolution of beliefs and strategies. Uh, we showed that the fixed point has the property of having consistent payoff estimate, um, no incentive to deviate. We looked at local and global stability properties and also provided conditions for complete learning and whether or not local exploration can help you to find the complete information equilibrium. So going back to this uh, traffic application, um, so if can you I map this- question, yeah. Yes, yes. <clears throat> so one thing I didn't understand in mm -hmm. the book is that what is the condition on the response? You gave three or four examples, right? So is that like a common condition that you impose on the, uh, I think, what did they call it? FI or something like that? Uh, yeah. Oh. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so okay. So, um, so there are lots of study about a, any particular strategy update when you fix the theta k plus, uh, theta k to be theta for every stage. So that just reduces to uh, many of the good papers here, right? Um, but the focus of us is really try to join these two lines of literature. No, no, I look at, I mean, yeah. My question is, is that a particular, so, so you give several examples here, mm -hmm. in GI, right? Yeah. Is that a particular, I mean, is that a, so I guess one, one thing I'm trying to understand is that does this also, does, does your proof cover the case where I may not do a best response. I might mm -hmm. do something to learn theta I. I mean, you know, it, it's possible to, to do, to have a response where I'm just taking an action just so that I can learn theta i better, mm -hmm. right? So some some type something like an exploration exploitation kind of a, a strategy would that would that be covered in your proofs or is that a separate? Uh, uh, does one need to look at that separately? Yeah. Okay. So I want to I want to maybe give two points um, as answers. So uh, first is that in continuous games it's not very straightforward what really is exploration versus exploitation here. Unlike in finite, so that's why I like although results hold in finite games, but I really think that the uh, usefulness of the result holds in continuous games more. Um, and the second is that uh, in the, the proof doesn't rely on any particular form that you choose in strategy update. But if you want convergence, you need this assumption, um, assumption two which is that if you fix the belief, the strategy update that you consider in the game will converge. If you relax this assumption, you do not have the convergence of strategy, but you can show that the strategy has the same tail behavior with respect to the strategy update with theta bar. Okay, so yeah, indeed, it's, it's kind of considered like the platform provides you information, but agents are trying to learn it, but in, in integrate this information provided by the platform, um, I talk about like local exploration because I feel in continuous game, like you would consider what if uh, agents have this trembling hand 
of uh, having small perturbation. And in concave game, it actually tells you that this resolves your problem. You don't need to be very bothered about sampling outside of a local neighborhood, but this is not the case if your payoff function is not concave. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so I have uh, maybe like five minutes and uh, I will uh, just briefly mention this part of the work that I'm currently working on and I'm pretty excited about. Um, so to have a connection with the part that we just talked about, I want to have this um, example of uh, learning in routing. So in this case, the information platform provides you information about edges that are repeatedly taken, but incomplete learning can arise when cost estimates become in, uh, are not accurate on edges that are not taken. But we have talked about, in this case, local exploration will resolve the problem. Um, and in fact, in routing problem, if the network is serious parallel, you would hope that learning, complete learning happens because any, uh, because the social cost with respect to the true equilibrium is in fact smaller or equal to, so ba basically is no higher than any other incomplete information fixed point. So you would want to do this local exploration to make sure that your learning can be complete. Okay, so what happens if there is a traffic authority that wants to uh, adaptively set the toll prices in order to induce, eventually induce um, that a learning, that a long run outcome arise from this learning is in fact not an equilibrium, but a complete information socially optimal routing strategy. However, the traffic authority initially may also do not have the uh, complete information about the edge cost function, and it relies on the information platform to provide this information. So if you look at this problem, uh, the, you, uh, the evolution in this um, network system has three parts. First is this learning of the cost function. The second is the strategy learning on the uh, traveler's side. And the third aspect is this adaptive incentive design uh, that is faced by the traffic authority. So we can show, so, so there are three dynamics here and we have addressed the, first, the, the interplay between the first two dynamics that may happen at the same time scale. But we can show by experiment that actually if your toll prices is updated at the same time scale, the system can cycle and never arrive at a stationary outcome. So the incentive mechanism needs to be updated at a slower time scale in the sense that the ratio between the uh, step sizes of the uh, toll update as well as routing update goes to zero. And under some mild condition, we can show that this in adaptive incentive mechanism will eventually lead to complete learning and leads to the socially optimal uh, routing strategy in the network with complete information. Um, on the authorities side. So this actually motivates us to go beyond the traffic application to really think about how to design the social scale systems, how to do the adaptive incentive design with learning agents. And the key here is that we propose an externality based incentive update. So what happens is that the incentive imposed to every agent in every step is a linear combination of the previous incentive plus a part that is very crucial. So this part is the estimated externality based on player I's current strategy, which can be updated because player I is learning, as well as the repeatedly updated information belief, theta k. So the incentive update uh, needs to be at a slower time scale. So the beta k, so, so the ratio of beta k as well as the strategy update will go to zero. So we have this time separation that the belief, the learning of the environment as well as the learning on the agent's side will um, happen at a faster time scale while the adaptive incentive design happen at a slower time scale. And the second is that this estimated externality has this economic meaning in that it equals to the marginal cost, the, the difference of the marginal cost of player I's strategy for the society. So the society cost is the designer's uh, cost function, 
minus the marginal cost of the of player I's strategy on player I themselves. So this is quantified as the externality, but this externality is adaptively changing with respect to the changing and updated strategy as well as the updated belief. So the benefit of this externality-based adaptive incentive design is to ensure that any fixed point of the dynamics must be a socially optimal incentive mechanism. This is actually uh, an advantage compared to, for example, if you swap this externality quantity that has economic meaning with something like a gradient. So in that case, you are not able to guarantee that all fixed point is what you want. But when you have estimated externality as a term here, you are able to show that when it converge, it must be a socially optimal incentive mechanism. And the reason is because um, at the optimal mechanism, you align individuals' incentive by asking individual to pay for their externality. And this adaptive incentive design also resolved the computing challenge that in the large scale system, the stationary outcome of the first two dynamics may not be so easy to uh, compute. So in fact, you would favor this adaptive incentive design approach that allow the social planner to eventually induce the long run optimal long run outcome, but just with very simple update rules um, in every stage. And we show that the convergence of the adaptive incentive mechanism design, although it doesn't uh, happen in all games, but it happens in a variety of important problems, such as public good provision in networks, uh, routing, as well as corner competition. And you can find more details about um, our results for this part in the two uh, papers that we just submitted. Okay, thank you. So this concludes my talk and I'm happy to answer any questions that the audience or the panelists might have. Thank you. Thank you, Manchi. That was a very nice talk. Um, if the audience has any questions, please put your questions in the Q&A box. <clears throat> I have uh, one more question I've already asked. Mm -hmm. uh, clarification questions. Um, I, was also, I was curious about what happens if uh, the unknown parameter changes slowly with time. So for example, if it has Fovian updates or some Martingale kind of uh, 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 update mechanism, would would we still be able to uh, track and, and I, yeah. And then, and then um, I guess, yeah, one will have to also define what it means to have be an equilibrium in that case, I suppose one, if it has a stationary distribution, one could try to look at the utility as an expectation further over the stationary, stationary distribution of that. So what would be the right way to think about it? Okay, I see. Yeah, so, I may not have a complete answer to your question, but I think one thing that holds true is that uh, the martingale is still a powerful tool of analyzing how your estimate evolves. Um, I guess in that case, learning will never stop. Um, learning will never stop and depends on how you aggregate information, how fast you aggregate information. You may be able to track the parameter involvement, Oh, actually, I think in uh, social learning literature, I think the Bayesian, Bayesian social learning literature a few years ago has some work about this uh, uh, changing online fundamental in, uh, in, in, the, in the network environment and to see how the uh, Bayesian learning of belief transaction can uh, keep track. I think in your case, they show that it can track. So I think some of the tools that they use uh, um, might be very useful for us to look at here. Uh, sorry, I don't exactly remember so what- Whose work, work is that? Do you know whose work that is? Uh, ben Golub. Okay. Oh, yeah. I think he's one of the answers. There, are, there, there must be others. Um, yeah, so in that case, that is the set of tools that deal with the belief side. So the, the thing is, when you once you de deal with the belief side, you decouple the convergence analysis, and then you can look at your strategy update accordingly. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so thanks. If there are no further questions, uh, thank you for a very nice talk. And thank you, uh, Srikant.
I hope the audience can join us for future colloquia. Yeah. Bye, Thank everybody. You. Thanks, everyone, for joining today. Thank you.